students hope all are doing well today we are moving on to the next chapter the name of the chapter is biological classification okay so we will be discussing what all there has been included in your syllabus in this academic year in this chapter yeah so what is biological classification you have already learned what is classification isn't it so why we are classifying why the organisms are classified so that if you are putting them into particular groups it will be easy for you to remember them yes or no it will be very easy for you to remember which category it is falling by learning the one organism from that group you will learn about the others you can easily predict about the others isn't it like for example if i know the features of sharuk khan then i can understand who and all is belonging to that category that status what sort of characters they usually can possess isn't it so uh, it is making us very simple to learn organism because there are innumerable number of organism to learn each and every organism it will be difficult so in order to avoid this one we are classifying organisms clear yeah? now when you are seeing this classification is done previously it was classified into two kingdoms so what were the two kingdoms the first kingdom is kingdom plantae and the second kingdom is kingdom animalia okay so kingdom animalia and kingdom plantae all the organisms were classified into two kingdoms like kingdom animalia who, who and all were belonging to whichever animals you are seeing and telling the ah this is animal yeah all animals are put into that okay Thereafter, unicellular organisms which are motile. Motile means what? They can move. As well as heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means what? They cannot prepare their own food. They depend upon others for their food. So that organisms are also put under animals. Clear? Now, plants when they are seeing in plants, they what and all they put? Actual plants which we are seeing and feeling like ah, this is plant that was put into that. Along with that, all the bacteria were also put into plants. Okay. All fungi which and all were present were also put into plants. Then unicellular green organisms. Green means what? Autotrophic. They can prepare their own food. Okay. Non-motile. They cannot move. Green organisms which are unicellular were again put in plants. Now when all these were put into animalia and plantae, it led to confusion. It was not that clear with this two kingdom classification. Because some animals were having the characteristics of both plants as well as animals. Okay. Some animals were so confusing uh, to find out whether it will be uh, having a characteristics of plant or animals. So thereafter in this two kingdom classification there was no distinction between water. Which is uh, unicellular, which is multicellular. They di didn't differentiate. Uh, thereafter which is eukaryotic, which is prokaryotic. I have learned in class 9. What is prokaryotic and eukaryotic? Uh, so this is a cell, isn't it? So in this cell you are having a nucleus. The nucleus is having a membrane. If the membrane is present, then we call it as what? Eukaryote. Nuclear membrane is present. True nuclear. We call it as eukaryote. If nuclear membrane is absent, we call it as what? Prokaryote. The nuclear material will be present just in the center. The DNA. What will not be there? The membrane will not be there. The DNA will be present somewhere. Okay? Just dispersed. Then in that case, we call it as what? We call it as prokaryote. So he didn't differentiate. These two kingdom classification didn't differentiate between unicellular multicellular, eukaryotic, prokaryotic, autotrophic, heterotrophic, confusion, confusion, confusion. In order to avoid that, there came three kingdom classification. Anyhow, we are not going into that. We are going directly to the topic five kingdom classification which is there for your syllabus. Okay. Now, five kingdom classification. As the name suggests, there are five kingdoms. Okay. And this is widely accepted. Who proposed to this one? It was proposed by R.H. Whitaker. Okay. So, what are the five kingdoms? The five kingdoms are 1. Monera 2. Protista 3. Fungi 4. Plantae 5. Animalia So, what are the five kingdoms? Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia For classifying these organisms into these five categories, there should be some criteria, isn't it? There should be some characteristics under which I have to group these organisms. So what were the criteria? Four criteria were considered by him, Whitaker, in order to classify organisms. So when you are finding any 
organism, you have to see the number one is cell structure. What do you mean by cell structure? How the structure of the cell is? What are the different cell organelles? What is this chemical composition? All these things we call it as what the cell structure. So first I have to study the cells of the organism when I am finding a new organism. Second, I have to just find out which level of thallus organization it is. What do you mean by thallus organization? Like for example, you can find amoeba. One single cell itself is an organism. Then I call it as cellular level. What do I call it? Cellular level of organization. Okay. Second, sponges when you are seeing porifera sponges, tissue level of organization. Tissue means what? You know that or uh, means cells combine together to form tissue. Tissues combine together to form organs. Organs combine together to form organ system. Organ system combine together to form organism, isn't it? So here, amoeba, organ system is not there. Tissue is not there. The cell itself is an organism, isn't it? So that is one type of thallus organization. Second is tissue level. Tissue level means what? The porifera, when you are seeing they are sponges. Example, which you find in the marine environment, the sponges, they a collection of cells, a group of cells, and that is acting as an organism. In some our cases, organ system level of organization. We are having what? Organ system. So next to what we have to see is that whether it is cellular level of organization that organism is or it is a tissue level of organization that was considered for study. Okay. So thallus organization it is clear. Just we have to find out whether it is a single cell acting as an organism or a group of cell tissues acting as an organism or is it having organ system then it will go to organ system level of organization. Okay. The next is your for study, we also need to consider what? Nutrition and reproduction. So what do you mean by this nutrition and reproduction? Nutrition of the organism we have to find out. Whether it is autotrophic means they can prepare their own food or not. Or whether it is heterotrophic. Okay. If they can prepare, it's autotrophic. If they cannot prepare, it is heterotrophic. Plants having chlorophyll, they can prefer autotrophic. We don't have chlorophyll, we cannot prepare, cooking is not preparing here. Okay, so we are heterotrophic, right? So that we have to take care, then reproduction, whether it is vegetative propagation method of reproduction, asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction, that has to be studied. Final genetic relationship is the fourth characteristics. So fourth criteria, phylogenetic, what do you mean by phylogenetic? It is evolutionary history. Learning the evolutionary history means uh, we are finding out why, how this organism evolved, which organism it was resembling, it is resembling to some extent, so that we can predict from this organism only this would have come because they are having most characteristics like this organism. Then what I am doing, I am learning its evolutionary history. By learning the development of the embryo, we can learn the evolutionary history of that organisms okay so by learning the evolutionary history also we can classify organism so for classifying the organism we tackle what four characteristics or criteria he used he used four criteria number is first you learn the cell structure second you find out the thallus organization third you have to know about its nutrition and reproduction and the fourth one is you have to know about its phylogenetic relationship clear now we are today going to learn in detail about the first kingdom, kingdom Munira. Okay, so this kingdom Munira, when you are seeing, it's divided into two categories, two groups. So what are the two groups? One is Archie bacteria, and another one is your new bacteria. So what is the difference between these? Archie bacteria is a primitive one. New bacteria is advanced one. True bacteria is okay. Archie bacteria, when you are seeing, they are having the cell wall which is much different from this U bacteria chemically. Okay. Then this Archie bacteria are staying in very unfavorable condition. Unfavorable means what? Very harsh condition. You can't even imagine a life is possible in that places. There, this Archie bacteria will be living. Okay. So number one is halophiles. What is the first one? Halophiles. Okay. So what is this halophiles? Halophiles are organisms which 
are living in extreme salty condition. Salty means what if you put a salt over a cell, isn't it? What will happen? The water and all will be taken by the salt and the cell will die, isn't it? But these halophiles, they can survive in extreme salty environment. That is number one. Number two, thermoacidophiles. So what is thermoacidophiles? Hot spring. Imagine volcano. It's how hot it is. Nobody can even imagine dare to go near it, isn't it? Near means what? To somewhat near also they can't even imagine. There in the volcano also you can find these bacteria are surviving. So they call it as thermoxidophiles. Okay, hot spring volcanoes and all. Methanogens. Methanogens are found in anaerobic condition. Like biogas plant, you have learned, isn't it? Biogas totally covered with the lid. No air can enter. There who can survive. These bacteria can survive. The name of the bacteria we call it as what? Methanogens. Okay. So they produce methane. That's why we are giving the name as what? Methanogens. So anaerobic condition. No air. There they can survive. Clear? Or marshy areas. Marshy means what? The clay, water, everything clumped together inside that. Somehow they are surviving. So in the forest as well as uh, in watery areas at all you can find it. We call it as what? Marshy areas. So there you can find these methanogens are surviving. Yeah. Then you are having what? The second category, eubacteria. Many are there. We are going to learn only about four. So what are the four we are going to learn? Cyanobacteria, chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria, heterotrophic bacteria and mycoplasma. So today we are moving into the kingdom Monera in detail. Hope the introductory part is somewhat clear to you people. Now we are going into which kingdom? The first kingdom. Name of the kingdom is Kingdom Munira. What are the two types? Archibacteria and Eubacteria. So, our second chapter, Biological Classification, right? So, when you are seeing this Biological Classification, the first classification was given by Aristotle. So, what did he do was that was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification of organism. He was the one who started classifying organism. He classified plants into three categories, the smallest classification you know. One which is very big having large uh, uh, trunk thereafter branches and big in nature that one we call it as what we call it as tree. Then what is a shrub, a small plant, one meter or some somewhat hard stem they are having, we call it as shrub. And um, less than one meter, small, small, weak stems, that we call it as what? We call it as herbs, isn't it? So, three categories were plants. One is trees, shrubs and herbs. And animals were grouped into two categories. So, what were the two categories? One is the red blood and another one is without red blood. Animals which is having red blood. And the other one is animal which is not having red blood, okay? Animals with red blood was uh, like mammals is having, right, RBCs in there. So, mammals, lizards, birds and fish is coming under animals which is having red blood. And the one which is not having red blood, uh, usually the invertebrates like no red blood, hard bodied uh, organism we call it as what the insects okay is an example for insects and when it moves on to soft bodies it is what the shell with shell like selfish and without shell okay no shells are present that is what the jelly fish so this is regarding aristotle's classification not that important uh, just you just go through need not right now this is also two kingdom classification i told you it was proposed by whom limenius okay so he classified into two one is what the plantae and another one was animalia kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay now this two kingdom classification had some drawbacks what were the drawbacks uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes were included under plants both prokaryotes prokaryotes means what they are having um, no nuclear membrane they are having primitive nucleus eukaryotes they are having nuclear membrane okay so these all were included under one category which was uh, based on the presence of what the cell wall but they differed in many aspects so it was not that good next unicellular as well as multicellular organism were all grouped under same category like algae when you are seeing the chlamydomas, spirogyra as uh, um, as well as multicellular algae or were put into one category okay that algae so that was also not that good 
and it also did, did distin uh, differentiate between or distinguish between whom the heterotropic fungi and the autotropic lean plants heterotropic means what they cannot prepare their own food autotropic means what they can prepare their own food that classification also was not done okay so and another problem was that uh, uh, this uh, fungi when you are seeing the cell wall is different they are having chitinous cell wall but plants are having what cellulose made up of cellulose chitin is a type of uh, biomolecule okay now cellulose when you are seeing it's a different chemical uh, composition both are different in nature but they are all were put under one category the plants okay so that's why it was rejected again this is also not that important you need not write so you will put the heading biological classification now where from you are going to start you are going to start from here you will directly write down five kingdom classification that's what we are going to discuss okay so five kingdom classification who proposed it it was proposed by whitaker done what are the five kingdoms we saw monera protista fungi plantae and animalia okay what was it based on i told you it based on cell structure thallus organization mode of nutrition and reproduction and phylogenetic relationship that is evolutionary relationship so this we have already discussed isn't it so organism the five kingdoms right now moving on to characteristics of the five kingdoms separately what the characteristics are okay now when you are seeing the first one is what the first one is uh, the cell type okay whether it is prokaryotic in nature or eukaryotic in nature prokaryote means what the nucleus inside the nucleus is not having a covering nuclear envelope nuclear membrane is absent then we call it as what prokaryotic if the nuclear membrane is present we call it as eukaryotic in nature isn't it many differences are there anyhow as of now you just remember prokaryote they are having primitive nucleus okay they do not have a well defined nuclear membrane eukaryote are advanced true nucleus they are having a nuclear membrane now cell wall of all are also different see monera they are non cellulosic in nature they are made up of what polysaccharides that is a carbohydrate amino acid is a protein okay and uh, um, protista when you are seeing the cell wall so in some they are having cell wall okay and fungi mostly it is made up of chitin a chemical compound called as chitin and they are made up of carbohydrate polysaccharides okay and the next one is your plantae they are having what cellulosic cell wall cell wall made up of a chemical compound called cellulose a form of uh, um, carbohydrate okay the next one is animalia they do not have a cell wall nuclear membrane is absent in monera protista the rest are all eukaryotic so everywhere it is present body organization when you are saying prokaryotic it is unicellular so it's unicellular so its cell is the organism protista cell is the organism but fungi you can find unicellular like yeast as well as you are having what multicellular loose uh, tissue like organisms are also present okay we will be learning in detail now plantae they are forming organism like tissue some are tissue some are uh, what organ like okay like algae and all you will be learning tissue now animalia some are having tissue level some are uh, organ system uh, some are organ organ level of organization will be present okay this is in detail in uh, animalia we will be learning one by one with examples now moving on to mode of nutrition nutrition is what in nature autotrophic in case of monera it is autotrophic so autotrophic means what they can prepare their own food okay either they can prepare with the help of light that is photosynthetic or they are producing food with the help of chemicals okay that is chemosynthetic some are heterotrophic means what they cannot prepare their own food okay protista they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic fungi never autotrophic all are heterotrophic in nature plantae plants so they are autotrophic in nature animalia it is heterotrophic in nature so differences between the all five kingdom i think it's clear okay this table has to be jotted down now moving on to the next uh, we are going to discuss today about the kingdom the first kingdom what is that kingdom kingdom monera and who is coming under that bacteria okay 
so the kingdom monera bacteria they are the most abundant microorganism abundant more many are present okay innumerable number of microorganisms are um, coming under what the kingdom monera okay hundreds of bacteria are present in handful of soil if you are just taking a handful of soil in that many innumerable number of bacteria are present okay they also live in extreme habitats so these are the characteristics extreme habitats means what where even you cannot imagine that life is possible there these organism are staying so where it is like you have hot spring i told you uh, like boiling water is coming out through hot spring there they can survive in deserts under the ocean deep under the ocean in the snows everywhere you can find this bacteria can survive okay and most of them are parasitic parasitic means what they will be living in the body of a living organism they will take all the nutrition from the living organisms so they are harming the living organism in which they are living like for example some bacteria are living in my body taking all the nutrition from me and i am being harmed how i am harmed i am suffering from any deficiency diseases so they are mostly parasitic in nature okay next moving on to uh, the kingdom there is the types okay based on the shape the bacteria are of four types so what are the four types coccus bacillus vibrium spirillum okay coccus are spherical round shaped bacillus are rod shaped vibrio are comma shaped okay and spirillum are spiral shaped spiral okay so coccus is spherical bacillus is rod vibrios are comma and spirillum is spiral okay like this spiral shape so these are the different types of bacteria based on the structure clear now kingdom monera bacteria structure if you are seeing how does the bacteria look like okay this is the diagrammatic representation of bacteria the diagram is there in the book you can draw it down okay so bacteria structure is very simple but their behavior is very very complex because uh, the metabolism the breakdown the working of each and every bacteria is different from one another like coccus is not similar to bacillus or bacillus is not similar to vibrio vibrio is not similar to spirillum they are different from one another metabolic reactions that is the chemical reaction that are taking place in each and every bacteria is are different from one another okay that is one thing has to be noted then some of the bacteria are autotrophic in nature because they have chlorophyll in it that's why they can synthesize food okay uh, some bacteria when you are seeing they are producing food from um, which is that uh, this uh, chemical substances okay chemosynthetic in nature they are what chemosynthetic in nature and majority of the bacteria are order uh, heterotrophs heterotrophs you know what is a heterotroph they cannot prepare their own food they depend on others for their food okay so from the dead decaying organism mostly these bacteria have their food that's why they are coming under a group we call it as decomposers okay so if you are putting a banana peel in the soil after some time when you go and see after some time means not just like that uh, after one day or two day yeah, one month you just go and see do you think that uh, that banana peel will be remaining there no it have be have been eaten up isn't it so how it is been eaten up it is been eaten up by many insects along with that that completely mixing it with the soil who is doing it is being done by bacteria okay so they are acting like decomposers okay any dead bodies put on the soil it will be decomposed by whom this bacteria yes okay so that is uh, regarding bacteria mostly heterotrophic some are autotrophic mainly the autotrophic mode of nutrition is what it is uh, with the help of chemicals they synthesize food okay now monera are classified into two broad categories so classification of bacteria that is monera uh, the kingdom monera it is into two what is they one is archibacteria and another one is eubacteria archibacteria when you are seeing i told you there are three types what are they one is halophiles thermoacidophils methanogens eubacteria are of two types one is autotrophic and another one is heterotrophic autotrophic means what they can prepare their own food if they are producing food with the help of light photosynthetic autotroph if they are preparing food with the help of uh, chemicals we call it as chemosynthetic autotrophs okay and heterotrophic example is parasites and saprophytes two types are there heterotrophic parasites mean what living body they are living 
they are taking the food from the living organism parasitic okay saprophytic from dead decaying matters they are taking the food then it is saprophytic so parasitic they are taking food from living organism saprophytic they are taking food from dead decaying organisms okay now moving on to kingdom monera in that the first one archibacteria we are going to discuss they live in harsh i told you they live in very harsh habitat if it is a salty area i categorize them under halophiles if it is in hot spring or volcano like we call it as thermosidophiles and if it is a marshy area we can consider it as methanogens and they have a different cell structure that's why the cell wall is so hard that make them survive in these extreme environmental conditions okay and methanogens are present where they are also present in the guts of the uh, uh, means uh, ruminants ruminants uh, means you know cow buffalo cattle okay so this methanogens uh, comes out and when you are putting this cow dung in biogas plant they are helping in the production of biogas in which the major composition of biogas is which gas it is methane okay so methane we are getting from the biogas plant because of the uh, degradation of uh, that cow dung by methanogens bacteria by methanogens that has been degraded and we are getting what we are getting uh, what is that my bio gas or methane gas okay so you can find halophiles thermosidophiles methanogens the cow there you can find it is present okay this diagrammatic representation now you bacteria okay so you bacteria what is the characteristics they are true bacteria they have a very rigid cell wall and they have a flagellum okay so what is a flagellum you can find here when you are seeing the structure here the green color one thread like structure coming out isn't it from the bacteria so that one we call it as the flagellum this flagellum what is the function is that they keep on moving like this and this because of which the bacteria can move from one place to another okay so the green color projecting one we call it as what the flagellum and the flagellum helps in moving from one place to another okay bacterial flagellum you can find isn't it so that is helping in moving from one place to another clear now they have a rigid cell wall and a flagellum flagellum will be present if the are motile motile means what they can move from one place to another bacteria which are non motile for them flagellum will not be present okay then they include autotrophs autotrophs you know photosynthetic in nature yes as well as you can find uh, heterotrophs are also present so some bacteria are autotrophic some ba eubacteria are heterotrophic in nature eubacteria now kingdom monera photosynthetic autotrophs is cyanobacteria so they are photosynthetic which means they can produce their own food by because they contain chlorophyll which chlorophyll they have they have chlorophyll a okay similar to the green plants they are having chlorophyll a and the cyanobacteria we usually call it as giving a name blue green algae what is the name of them blue green algae okay they are unicellular one cell colonial many cells combined together one or filamentous you can find oscillatoria diagram right they are filament like okay like rod like filament like okay so one cell unicellular group of cells cluster colony or filamentous okay and these colonies when you are seeing many cells they are all been enclosed in a sheath so so imagine all my these fingers are cells okay and it is my all these fingers are covered by a sheath okay so then i call this sheath when you are seeing this sheath we give a name it is gelatinous sheath what is the name of the sheath gelatinous sheath okay so colonies if it is present mostly all these are clubbed together and like a jelly like form they will be present by covering by with the help of what a sheath we call it as what the gelatinous sheath and they often form blooms in polluted water bodies algal bloom you have learned right eutrophication or algal bloom in environmental chapter so now what is algal bloom what is algal bloom what is algal bloom see from fertilizers and all we are applying in the fields isn't it so nearby the fields or any pond if the rain is there so the rain will carry the soil along with that the nutrients the fertilizers everything is being carried and where it is being dumped it is being dumped into the water bodies now the water bodies has having much amount of nutrients isn't it 
so this nutrients is used by some algae will be there that algae what they are doing is that they are getting the nutrients and their number is going on increasing in a very high rate okay so when this algae starts dividing why they are dividing faster because they are getting much food now if they are getting food they will multiply fastly reproduce fastly their number is going on increasing 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 and you can find the whole pond which was previously very good not polluted all of a sudden all of a sudden means it takes time anyhow so it will be turning green green from one side gradually gradually the green will go on increasing and it will, the whole pond will get converted into water green uh, outer covering isn't it so this green one which is growing over the pond okay they are the algae so when this algae is seen whole throughout the pond then i give it the term what algal bloom this algal bloom is going to disturb the ecosystem after some time you can find the whole ecosystem is getting collapsed the pond is becoming useless okay so this algae is also responsible for what polluting water bodies causing what algal bloom clear and some algae are blue green algae when you are seeing they are having the capacity to fix atmospheric nitrogen because uh, they have a structure called as what heterocyst okay so anabina you have seen inside one uh, the big uh, figure what has been given there the uh, magnified figure the round inside you can find many that structure we call it as what heterocyst and this heterocyst is presence when you are seeing is a specialized cell which is present in the cyanobacteria which can fix atmospheric nitrogen they will take the nitrogen from the air and fix it in the soil in the form of salts nitrites and nitrates so plants can take this nitrogen okay so this uh, anabina or this uh, chemo um, sorry cyanobacteria is used in helping in what heterocyst are helping in nitrogen fixation so in fixing atmospheric nitrogen the blue green algae are having special structures called as what we call it as heterocyst and they are helping in fixing atmospheric nitrogen example for cyanobacteria is nostoc and ana bena oscillatoria are all examples of what heterocyst okay sorry uh, cyanobacteria now moving on to kingdom monera and uh, that you bacteria we are discussing for phototropic is over okay phototropic now chemosynthetic means what with the help of light they are not going to produce food they are produced to produce food with the help of chemicals okay so how they are going to uh, produce food they oxidize the inorganic substances okay in the soil the inorganic substances whatever is present uh, uh, like uh, sodium potassium calcium all these inorganic substances are oxidized is broken down okay it is oxygen is reacting and it is broken down and they are releasing what they are um, um, using they are releasing energy what they are releasing the energy and this is form of energy it is utilized by them for their functioning okay so in that case i call it as what chemosynthetic synthesis synthesizing what food from where chemo chemicals where is the chemicals present in the soil or wherever they are saying there the chemicals will be present so they are oxidizing the inorganic substances what are the substances like nitrites nitrates ammonia these all inorganic substances are oxidized now when this oxidation is taking place what is released they are releasing atp and this atp it is utilized for they by them for producing the food that's why we call it as what chemosynthetic chemically synthesizing food by themselves uh, they we call it as what chemosynthetic bacteria okay so they help in recycling nutrients i know you know recycling the nitrogen is being used up after that they are fixing it there after they are releasing also when they are breaking it down they are releasing the nitrogen into the atmosphere so for nitrogen cycle sulfur cycle phosphorus cycle for this and all they are playing a major role because when they are breaking down the gases are released and the gases can be nitrogen can be um phosphorus like that it can move out uh, phosphorus in the soil nitrogen as a gas it will be moving out okay yeah now again you bacteria heterotrophic heterotrophic means what they cannot prepare their own food who are they they are the one which are mostly available so most of the bacteria are heterotrophic in nature some of the eubacteria were phototrophic 
somewhere chemosynthetic next is heterotrophic ok so abundant you can find heterotrophic bacteria and most of them are decomposers I told you they de decay they decay matter and mix it up with the soil then impact of uh, heterotrophic bacteria on human how we are benefited see these heterotrophic bacteria not only helping as decomposers they also have some other uses so what are the other uses okay they are used for making curd lactobacillus you would have heard isn't it curd if you are putting in the milk the next day the curd is ready so where from you are getting this curd you are getting this uh, curd how it is made from the curd only so what does this curd contain it contains bacteria what is the bacteria lactobacillus the lactobacillus when they are being put into the milk the curd is put into the milk the lactobacillus is put into the milk the milk they will be going on multiplying eating up the milk and uh, converting it into their colony will increase and all the curd will be converted into lactobacillus bacteria whether it is good or bad it is a useful bacteria it's good bacteria okay it has helped in the production of antibiotics you know antibiotics what is antibiotic uh, chemical means uh, we are synthesizing something from bacteria okay so from bacteria some uh, secretion is produced by bacteria and it is used for killing other bacteria okay so from where i am taking it this should be a useful bacteria so imagine this is bacteria one okay this bacteria is producing a juice this bacteria is a useful one because this juice when it is put into my body it is not causing any harm but this juice when you are seeing is having the ability to cut another bacteria so this is another bacteria harmful causing disease so from this bacteria if you are taking out the juice and putting it into this uh, into my body this juice will go and kill which one will kill the bacteria the second harmful bacteria will be killed so what are antibiotics antibiotics are secretions produced from useful microorganism which is used for killing harmful microorganism okay so we are producing it from useful microorganism for what for killing harmful microorganism so i am suffering from a disease i am taking antibiotic what is the antibiotic doing they are going and producing something which is or it is containing something which is going and killing whom the germs which is growing in my body so that i am recovering from the disease okay so that is antibiotics they also fix atmospheric nitrogen i told you heterocyster cyanobacteria but some of the bacteria are pathogenic causing diseases they are not that good like cholera vibrio cholerae typhoid tetanus citrus canker is in plants are all caused by whom these bacteria they also have the ability to cause diseases okay now reproduction of uh, this uh, monera when you are seeing by fission fission means what from one cell division two cell comes out okay some under unfavorable condition they will be producing spores spores means uh, round round structures okay and uh, they there are also sometimes the bacteria may also go for what sexual reproduction okay so in the sexual reproduction the two bacteria come close contact some genetic material from this bacteria is transferred to this and from genetic material from this bacteria is transferred to this so you just need to know in detail you are not learning anyhow so you can find uh, the third diagram uh, first one is what uh, mm, you can find uh, uh, yeah like where yes the last diagram is spore formation okay the third diagram what you are seeing is dna transfer from one bacteria the dna is getting transferred to other bacteria so like that uh, they can undergo what two parents are involved then it is sexual reproduction okay but much sexual reproduction not like that as uh, multicellular organism to some extent we can consider only exchange of genetic material is taking place okay so the second diagram is also two parents are coming in close contact genetic material from here is shifted to there from there it is shifted to here so two new organisms are formed which is having different genetic materials okay so that is uh, sexual reproduction dna transfer from one bacterium to another okay and under under favorable conditions they are forming what they are forming spores spores the last diagram you can find spore formation okay so they are forming spores uh, and these spores when you are seeing they are going to form what a new bacteria then we call it as spore formation and uh, first diagram is binary fission fission from one two are formed from how many are formed 
to a phone. So, then we call it as fission. So, what are the different methods of reproduction of monerans? Fission, spore formation, sexual reproduction by DNA transfer. Only this much term you need to learn much in detail it is not necessary. Okay. Mycoplasma is the last category of kingdom monera. Okay. What is mycoplasma? They are organism without a cell wall. They do not contain a cell wall and they are the known smallest known organism in the world. Smallest living creatures in the world is what? This mycoplasma, one back form of bacteria. Okay. And they are anaerobic in nature. They can survive without oxygen and mostly they are pathogenic. Pathogenic means what? They cause diseases both in plants as well as in animals ok. So, this mycoplasma are categories of bacteria which do not have a cell wall which can survive without oxygen which are the smallest of all and they are pathogenic in nature disease causing in nature. In the next class we will be discussing about kingdom protista. Thank you stay home stay safe.